Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I'm making this really cute furry baby blanket. Now, this is quite a large blanket. I don't know if you can make out just how large. It's for a kind of cot size, although the child it's for is not in a cot anymore, but they do like to lay on the sofa with a blanket over them. So this is nice and big. Um, now I'm making this with a yarn that I bought from a store, a quite an inexpensive store in the UK called Pound Stretcher. And it's called Super Soft Knitting Yarn Melody. Um, ideal knitting yarn for baby pro products, but the only drawback to it is it's not machine washable, so ho it has to be done on a very delicate uh, washing and in, in maybe in a in a bag, but or hand wash it, which would be very very difficult. But it's lovely stuff. It's really really soft. Um, I would say that it kind of makes it a chunky. Um, it's very it's a very fine strand, but the fluff on it takes it up to a bulky five a chunky in the uk so i'm going to show you how to do it but it's very difficult to show you with that yarn i will show you some of that in a second but what i did i made a couple of swatches in different yarns to show the stitch now first off i chose this yarn which also came from pound stretcher and it is a super chunky so a super bulky a six and this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a mesh. And I always know this as mesh stitch, or it's like a garter stitch, but with a UK treble crochet, which is a double crochet in the US. So it makes this kind of mesh, which is perfect for things like market bags, um, that kind of stuff, but it's quite holy. Obviously using furry yarn, it's not. And that's why I chose this stitch, because working with something like that, when you have quite dense fur, you can't really see where you're putting your hook so easily. The hardest row to work on is that is that first row of chain. So I made it using James C. Brett's Flutterby, and this is with quite a large hook. So again, it's quite a mesh. And this is what it looks like with um, a DK weight, a three weight yarn, which um, is pretty much a nice standard DK. It's not, it's not thin, it's just about the right kind of weight. Uh, some DKs come up quite thin and some kind of come up quite chunky, but this one is pretty much standard. And I've used a 4.5 millimetre crochet hook. So if you wanted to make a mesh, um, kind of of this um size that's um that's kind of the size of hook you'd need if you were making a market bag and you wanted these kind of size holes but obviously if you want smaller holes you can drop the hook size down or you can um instead of doing a treble crochet you can do a half treble which is a half double in the US so it's either a double crochet or a half double um or even a single crochet in the US, which is a double in the UK. It is confusing that our sizes are different, but the reason I wanted to show you this was because to do it in this kind of yarn, I can show you how we cope with the edges to keep them nice and straight. And it is actually straight. It's only the fact that it's so loose and um, willowy that it doesn't look that way. So I'm gonna show you with this white yarn with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And then I will show you with the fur how I've been, um, what I've been doing. So I've got a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. I've got my scissors and darning needle, but I don't think I really need them for this. This is just a little swatch. I do have a pair of glasses somewhere. So let's put them on. You, Those of you very observant might see that I'm in a different room. And that is because um, it's very dark today. It's a really heavy rain and the yarn room is very, very dark and hard to see. So I'm out here in the, in the kitchen. So I'm going to make a slip knot. You can do that however you like. And this, the blanket is um, 
multiples of, well, how can I say this? Multiples of two plus uh, two. So really, it's an. If you're going to make it, I would. I always think I'd, I worked it out so that it was an odd number plus one. So really, you just need an even number. So I'm going to do sixteen chain. So that's three, four. So I've done 16 and it's not going to make a very large swatch, I know, but it's just really to show you how this stitch works out. So in the third chain from the hook, this doesn't this doesn't count. There's one, two. So it's this one here. I'm going to do a standard UK treble or double crochet in the US. So that's just three loops on the hook through two and through two. So this now is my end and it's given me two stitches because these two chain count as a treble crochet and then this one counts as a treble. Remember that's a UK treble and it's a US double. So now I'm going to skip one and do another in the next one. So just one single on its own and one chain. Skip one and one in the next one. So we're kind of now, if you stop for a second, I'll just do one more and then I will show you them. So we skip one, go into the next one. What we're doing is we're making boxes, if you like, and this, but we've got two stitches at this end. So we're gonna carry on until we get all the way to the end. Skip one, one in the next, and this is what I did with the furry yarn. And it is actually a lot easier to work with than, um, than it looks. I know it doesn't look it. And now, so we've got three. So we're gonna do skip one, go in this next one, and then one more in the very end chain. So, including our two stitches at the beginning, we now have two at each end. So now I'm going to chain up three. So three because I always chain two when it comes to doing a UK treble or a US double. I only ever chain two to get up to the height. But we've got two here, so we need to skip over this one. So I've chained three, and now I'm going to work in this hole. I'm going to just do another UK treble in there and chain one. Now I'm going to go in every gap all the way to the end. It's a very, very simple stitch. But when you've got furry yarn or very fussy yarn, you don't really need intricate stitches. I have a little saying that I always say, if the yarn is the star, then you need an, a simple and plain stitch. So now I've done my last, well I haven't, there's my last one. And I've got my last stitches. Now remember that's the two chain that we started with and our first one. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to go into this chain, the top of this chain, which is there. Uh, well, it was there, let's see. It's because the, oh, that's better. <laughs> because the camera was in the way, I'm going to do my last stitch. Now I'm going to chain two and turn. So all, on alternate rows, I just need to pull out some more yarn. On alternate rows, you'll chain two. The next row, you'll chain three. And that's because when you look at it now, we don't have two stitches at the start. We have one and a gap. So all we're going to do is go into the gap and that will give us on our next row those two together. So now we're just going to go in the gaps as usual and chain to the end. And the only way you have to watch it is sometimes when you're at the end you miss the fact that there are two stitches and but you have to kind of keep your wits about you so now there's into the gap and don't forget you need to go 
into the second, there's our first chain, there's our second. You need to go into that to give us our second stitch. So now we've chained two, but there's this stitch, so we chain another one, and we're gonna go in each of the holes again. And this is how we're making the mesh for this stitch. And this, these rules apply whatever size. So if you wanted to make a bag, um, you would just do more, more stitches, but basically it's an even number of stitches with your turn in chain. Don't forget to do your chain in between. I almost did then. So now we're here. And we've got our two stitches, so we need the chain and go into the top of our two chains. There we are. So it does look a little bit higgledy piggledy because if you're like me, your work slants a little bit. So it just needs a little bit pulling into a proper proper square mesh. But that's that's basically it. So that's how you do it when you're working with a nice, simple, easy to see DK weight or even the chunky yarn. It's all the same. You still, you can see you've got your two stitches here. And then on this row, you've just got the one. So you do the three. So it's exactly the same. And that is how, this is really weird yarn. It's actually very, 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 very shiny. And it splits easy. That's the only thing I'll say about it. But it is, it's bizarre. It's quite weird to work with. So when it comes to working with this furry stuff then, the same rules apply although it is a little bit more difficult to see. So I've got to find my work. Here we are. It's going to be a bit tough to see it because it is just so... Hang on. Where's my end? Around that side. There we go. Let's just get it. So i pull my yarn over this side. That's it. Now, it's hard to see because of... it's so big, but... <clears throat> Here's our working edge, and let's pull my. I've got the wrong hook. <laughs> I don't really want to work with that. That's tiny. So for this one, I didn't want the stitches to be very, very holy. I'm, I've said it a, a lot of times. I'm not really keen on overly large holes, so I'm using a five and a half, and so that's perfectly fine for this. It, you can still see where you're going but it's not massively holy so I believe I have to do one chain there so there you can just feel where your hole is the hardest row is the chain the, the foundation row where you're doing the chain and you've got to but even that I could see quite clearly where to go but you just just keep working you can feel the space which is why I wanted to work um with a stitch like this i was either going to do um a half treble which is a half double in the us or a full treble which is a double in the us because you know i think if i'd have been working in small stitch like a, a us single or a, which is a uk double i think that would have been harder to feel where i wanted to put my hook but it's ever so easy with this and um i know it's it's quite fluffy, but you can actually feel that you've gone through two stitches and there's your two. It's a lot easier than you think once you get going. But that's basically all I've done. So I'm just going to pause there for a second while I clear this out of the way and I'll show you uh, or tell you exactly how I've done this blanket. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you um, how easy it was to to do this but um, the best play, laid plans and all that don't always work out do they when you do it on camera but just to let you know that my blanket was 100 stitches so 100 chain so I'm just going to do 10 there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten might be a bit small so we do 11 12 13 
14. So, oopsie, now that's put a spanner in the works already because I've probably undone some. We'll start again. Bear with me a second. Okay, so I made sure I've got 14. So there's basically one stitch there. You can just about see the cotton. So there's two. So I'm going into this stitch here. It is difficult to see it, but you kind of get used to judging it. Also, I find this yarn is extremely forgiving. Who knows if you've made a mistake? Only you. So I'm going to skip one and do one in this stitch here. I know it's hard to see, but... And again, you can just see it there. We're in this stitch. There's one. So we're going to go in this one. And that is how I did it. Just kind of pieced together my way along. It was hard because I had a hundred stitches, but I got there. And as I said, if I'd made a mistake, I don't think it would really notice if I'd had one that was slightly bigger or one that was slightly sort of less space. It's just such a fluffy mess, isn't it? So you wouldn't know necessarily. And it hides a multitude of sins. So that's how I went all the way along. It's quite easy in a way once you get going unless you do that that's not so good so then you just have to take it back to where you know you're at and start again <laughs> but that's it basically so um with this kind of weight and this amount of fluffy yarn i just i'm not going to do too much because it's going to be a bit of a pig to undo and i'll need the yarn so um it will probably knot up and I'll have to waste some. But that's it. That's all you do. And then on the way back, you know you've got this bulky bit here is two stitches. And so you can feel the way that these um, rows work up with the two. So the next one would just be a chain and go into this end stitch only. But you can feel those nice big gaps that you have to go in. And so that's all you do. And it's it what well, it does it's easier to when it's a lot easier than it seems when you're doing it. Um but obviously you don't have to choose something that's quite as fluffy as this. But I have to say, having worked with it and I've got this far in the, with this blanket, which is now actually quite a size, um, it's not that hard because you can see if you pull it out, you can see that mesh just the same as you know if you were using any other yarn but of course it's all buried which is lovely so thanks for watching um obviously if you wanted to make it for a stroller or a, a pram you don't obviously need that many that many chain i would say that a hundred is a good width for a cot or putting over a kitty that just wants to lay on the on the sofa but that width is probably the length of the other. So if you wanted to make it the other way, you could still start with 100 and then just once you think it's wide enough, you can then stop. Or you can just do less um, less chain. Just It's just hold it up to um, the width that you want really and judge it. As long as you've got the right amount, like an even number at the end of the day, you're, it's going to work out for you. Um, but sometimes it, you just want to make a small one to go over a car seat or a, quite a big one to wrap around a pram. Some prams are bigger than others. So you just have to judge it, basically. But it's ever so easy once you get going. And you can see the mesh if you pull it out and you can feel where your stitches are going to go. The hardest row is the first one. So thanks for watching. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.